my name is Stefanie Holzwart and I work on the topic of urban mobility in UN Habitat, the United Nations Human Settlements Program headquartered in Nairobi in Kenya. In our daily work at UN Habitat, we provide knowledge, policy advice and technical assistance to governments to make cities socially and environmentally sustainable. We are increasingly urban. Did you know that by 2050, 66% of the world's population is expected to live in cities? We have to be aware that there are strong regional variations, with nearly 90% of this urban population increase taking place in Africa and Asia, the fastest urbanizing regions in the world. Many people move to cities in search of a better life. However, the promise of opportunity remains out of reach for most people living in urban areas. Limited access to jobs, education, healthcare and social opportunities severely limits their ability to escape poverty. Safe, affordable and reliable transport systems can help people in accessing these opportunities. Cities are tasked to respond to the rapid population increase with well-planned and integrated approaches. However, capacities and financial means in cities are often limited. As a result, we end up with issues of congestion, social segregation and urban sprawl. For too long, governments have promoted car-based policy and investment decisions that are now locking our cities into sustainable transportation patterns. According to the Global Mobility Report of 2017, which was developed by the Sustainable Mobility for All initiative, an additional 1.2 billion cars will be on the roads by 2030, double the total in 2017. Can you actually imagine the number of cars in your city to double or triple? For Nairobi, where I currently live in, I cannot. Car-oriented transport planning has greatly contributed to decreasing urban densities as cities accommodate motorized transport and build low-density housing in the outskirts. The result is further congestion and declining average speeds. Many countries are losing large shares of their gross domestic product to traffic congestion, such as in Egypt, where 4% of the GDP is lost in traffic jams. Globally, transport accounts for about 64% of the total oil consumption, 27% of all energy use, and approximately a quarter of energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. Another concerning number is the deaths on the world's roads, which remains high. An estimated 1.3 million people die each year, and road traffic injuries are now the leading cause of deaths for children and young adults aged 5 to 29 years. The low-income population groups, in particular, are forced to walk in busy streets or move in overcrowded buses. In many cities, there is a lack of a formal public transport system, while informal minibuses form the backbone of transporting people. These buses are often unsafe, low in capacity and uncoordinated. Such conditions leave many people with limited mobility options and hinder them from accessing economic and social amenities such as workplaces, schools or health centers. While cities are striving to develop and progress, more cars are being added to the roads. But the good news is that economic roads can be decoupled from motorization. Cities around the world have experimented with effective levers and policy priorities to achieve a sustainable mobility pathways. For example, by improving public transport, walking and cycling, introducing parking regulations, or promoting the integration of land use and transport planning through transit-oriented development. We need to learn from these cities and leapfrog to a sustainable mobility pathways while avoiding the evolutionary mistakes of car-oriented cities. In order to achieve the sustainable pathways for transport, we have to follow the AVOID shift and improve framework. We need to start with the AVOID, by reducing the need for motorized travel. Secondly, we need to shift away from the most energy consuming and polluting transport modes, such as private cars, towards more environmentally friendly modes. 
And lastly, we need to improve vehicle and fuel efficiency, promote electric mobility, as well as work on enhancing the operational efficiency of public transport. This should also include the enhancement of the attractiveness of public transport. Important here is to understand that there is a hierarchy from left to right. Among the successful policy levers from cities around the world is the introduction of efficient and high-capacity public transport systems. We need to promote mass rapid transit systems that can carry many people comfortably and efficiently, such as metros, light rails, bus rapid transit or urban cable cars, at an affordable price for everyone. We have to ask ourselves what we want for the future of our cities. A lot of new players with disruptive technologies are emerging in the mobility sector. While these provide great opportunities to increase the efficiency and quality of services and infrastructure, we need to ensure that they are human-centered, inclusive and act as impactful solutions. Instead of driverless cars, maybe we need more carless streets. I would like to share my personal vision of the future of urban mobility. All large cities will have an efficient, safe and accessible public transport system that is well integrated with walking, cycling or shared mobility options. People walk and cycle for short distance trips because it's convenient and safe. Few people own cars anymore and the ones that do need to compensate for it following the polluter pays principle. Some vehicles are going to be big enough to share, others are individually sized to make the most of the limited street space. It is cheap and affordable to everyone to use electric and shared mobility options. Speed in inner city areas does not go beyond 30 km per hour. Parking no longer exists, or if it exists, it has to be expensive and the space that has been reclaimed is being used for people. I believe that with this vision in practice, people will feel safe and healthy, have places for social interaction and can live a happy urban life. <laughs>